Hey guys, it's one R. Smith, and I am back. This time, I'm going to do somewhat of a follow-up to my Destiny Revive review. This week, I'm going to be taking a look at the Master Grade Sword Impulse Gundam from Gundam C Destiny. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to follow up on the Destiny Revive. If you guys don't know, the Force Impulse Gundam was one of my very first kits that I've ever built in Gunpla. I got it about five years ago when I was starting off after my 20th birthday, and it was atrocious. Bad num marks, excess gates left on the runners, no business using plastic cement, no concept of semblance of understanding seam lines. It was just a train wreck, and I loved every single second of it. And I thought it'd be pretty interesting to come back on this city. If you guys don't know, the Impulse Gundam is Zap's attempt at trying to create the success of the Strike Gundam. As long as innovating on some of its flaws and fixing some of the issues that the Strike had. For example, once the batteries on the Strike ran out, goodbye phase shift on them. Only nuclear powered kits like the Freedom, Providence, and Justice could maintain perpetual energy. The Impulse tried to fix that by using somewhat of a particle beam within the ship to charge it up and it did pretty good even though it for a lot of people it it, it does come off as a shameless strike imitator but that's what it kind of was that was Zap's attempt at making which if you really think about it it'd be kind of funny to be a fly in that movie. I can't believe this we kidnapped four of the Earth Alliance's best weapons in the Jeep program and this one mobile suit it's wrecking our top soldiers. What we the hell? We have to understand that the Strike Gundam is probably the most versatile of the five G weapons that the Earth Alliance put together. What do you mean? Well, sure, we did kidnap four of them with four of our elite pilots, but you do have to understand that the Strike Gundam, for what we see, it has a very unique configuration. It's designed to take on any surmountable task that both the mobile suit and the pilot can take on. None of the four that we kidnapped can handle that set of configuration. Well, it's true. It seems like the Strike Gundam is one of the most versatile weapons that the Earth Alliance can put together. That even though we have all these great pilots, that we just can't top it, even with a coordinator as a pilot. You know what? Let's come up with our own mobile suit. Let's put all of our resources on a single mobile suit that can handle any tactical strategy that the Earth Alliance can throw at us. Wait a minute here. Instead of focusing on one mobile suit and wasting so much resource, why don't we just develop a group of mobile suits that are very capable and very versatile in their assets and battle strategy? But we're Zap. We got our asses handed in this war, and we might be at peace, but we need to retain our dignity here. I mean, yeah, we're or, but don't you think you're being a little impulsive here? Impulse. That's going to be the name of our strike on them. We're going to do it even better than the Earth Alliance could ever possibly think of. Fuck the Earth Alliance and fuck or. Why do I get the feeling that we're going to have another war on our hands with this type of mindset? But here we are, I'm going to try to take a look back at this kit and see if I can do it justice this time. This kit is pushing on 10 years now, does it still hold up? Is it still a good kit or does it fall to the waistlines of time? It's up to me to figure it out and try to inform you the best I can. So why don't we open up the box and see what we have here. When you open up the box for the Sword Impulse Gundam, you're going to see a couple of runners that are familiar. As seen here, the A runner is universal to both the Force and Sword Impulse Gundam, and a lot of the runners are going to be used, obviously. You're going to get, instead of blues, you're going to be getting reds, instead of reds, you're going to be getting blacks, and overall, it's mostly the same kit, but just in a different color scheme. One notable difference is that you're going to be getting the Sword Silhouette, which is a, basically an adjacent backpack that's attached to it. It's going to put together in a different piece along with a silhouette. Think of the Strike Rouge version RM from Gundam C Destiny that we got a couple years ago. It's very similar to that backpack. Otherwise, it's your standard affair for a late 2000s Master Grade. But I gotta say, this box has a lot of things packed into it. There's so many different types of runners in here. It goes all the way to T, which has been 
quite a while since I've seen so many runners just stacked on top of each other. One other cool aspect, at least on the A runners, is it comes with an extra back piece so that it makes the impulse adaptable to the older C kits, such as the Strike and the Strike Roots. Not too sure about Freedom though, but it gives you that option if you have those older C kits. Otherwise, it's just your standard affair for a late 2000s mouse grade. All built up, and now we have the Sword Impulse coming. I gotta say, out of the box, it looks really great. It has a decent amount of color separation, especially with the side skirt. And the white that was chosen for the armor works really well. It's not completely white, but it's not bone white either. Also, I gotta say, I love the head sculpt. It's perfect, it has so many different line opportunities. And it looks great. And I gotta say, balance-wise, it is a little wonky with the backpack, but... If you can finagle the swords on the backpack, you can make it stand and use it as support. I'm pretty happy with the overall project, but the build sometimes was a little lackluster, and some pieces I felt didn't stay together. Especially with the head, I highly, highly suggest you glue the V-fin in the black, black piece that's in front of it. But while it looks good, why don't we take a look at some of its articulation and see if that holds up even after a decade later. Like always, we're gonna start with the head. The head is on a double joint and can go 360, but please be mindful of the collar. It really gets in the way. No, seriously, this is really starting to piss me off here. This collar is almost impossible. With the shoulder and the arms, they are in separate pieces, so they can go pretty far out and can go 360 degrees, no problem. You're going to get a nice double jointed elbow, and you're going to get a hand with 3-1 split. Not a ton of waist articulation due to the 4 silhouette gimmick. The sides and back skirts and front skirts can move out. You're going to get a lot of nice knee articulation and the ankles can go up and down. Overall, I would say that the Sword Impulse Gundam has a good amount of articulation and separation. Could use a little bit of work, but what can we do? Here we are. I gotta say that the Sword Impulse is one of the more action-packed model kits when it comes to accessories. There's just so many to start off with, and we're gonna go by each one, so let's go step by step here. First off, you're going to be getting the Impulse Beam Rifle and the Shield. If you're wondering, yes, it's the exact same carbon copy that you would be getting with the Force Impulse Gun. No color changes, no build changes, the exact same. It works pretty well. You get two types of connections with the Shield, and the hand can hold up the gun alright, but it uses the old style peg connection, so I do worry about how hard or how long lasting that peg connection is going to last. And if you were curious, you can store the beam rifle on the back skirts on its back. So it has a great amount of storage options for you to use. The next big accessory is the sword silhouette. So it acts like a backpack similar to the Strike and the Impulse Gundam. It comes in a flyer and it has the two Excalibur battle swords attached to it. The attachment connection works pretty well, and you holds up pretty well. Just again, like I said before, try to use the swords as extra legs for you to stand on. With the four silhouette comes the boomerang as well as the flash edges, which can be used as both a melee and a beam weapon. So you can either use it in two sort of ways that I'll display here. First off, you can use it as a boomerang or a battle weapon that you can use to whack someone's head with. It looks pretty cool, especially after you get the impulse on an action base. And it's very effective. Another big bonus is that once you get it up there, you have almost no limits of what you could do with the flash edges, because it also comes in a beam sword mode, which if you take a good look, it has a lot of crystal effects on the beam point, which is a nice touch. Next, you're going to be getting these hands. These hands are going to be used to hold the Excalibur Sword. 
You cannot hold them with the regular 3-1 hand. Don't make the mistake that I did five years ago and throw them out. Don't do it, guys. How you hold them up is you take the hands, the bracket hands out, place the swords in, and clamp them well together. It works decently enough, but I personally find the connection is not powerful because there's nothing holding it in but a slight crack on the hilt where it allows the space in the hands and friction. However, some of that problem is alleviated once you get it on an action base. But still, I just think that this kind of method of holding the sword just does not work well. I think it should have been had something more sturdy to hold on to in terms of the connection, but that's just me. And finally, I am obligated to show you the chest flyer mode. I'm sorry, I really don't care that much for this variation of how the sword impulse works. I'll explain later. Here we are at the end of the review, and I'll say that the sword impulse Gundam is good, but that age is really starting to show in a lot of its design aspects. As I stated previously, I don't care for the flyer modes. I really don't. I personally find that the core splendor gimmick really hurts the Impulse Gundam's articulation with the chest. And at least in my experience with it, both five years ago and for this review, I find that it just doesn't connect well for me. I hate it and I wish it was a lot sturdier. The connection to the Excalibur Swords is decent enough, but it just doesn't have enough friction and enough connectivity in order for you to get the swords up. Weight also has a bit of a factor to play in that department, but I do think there should be a stronger connection for the points. Uh, some of the design aspects I feel are outdated. Some of the waist skirts and stuff don't even have inner frame. But again, it's from 2009, so I can't gripe on it too much. I would say that the Impulse is a good starter model kit for someone who's starting out in the Master Grade, someone who's looking something for something a little different in your average Gundam, but still in line with that RX-78 lineage of imagery. But the Sword and Force Impulse Gundam I really do feel could be benefited for having a 2.0 or a remaster. Matter of fact, as I record this, Debon just announced prototypes for a sword and force impulse so maybe they can probably fix a lot of these issues especially since it's been a decade and we haven't seen a blast impulse gundam from bandai which i would take even if it were p bandai i don't know why they're waiting on this it's been a decade just released already overall sword impulse gundam good kit shows his age not a bad starter kit and maybe not a strong go get it but if you're a fan of c destiny go get it one on one with now. See you later. Peace.